Greetings, viewers, and welcome to today's information snippet. We will be covering the calculations of rep commissions within SAGE 200 Evolution. <clears throat> now, the important thing to remember is that within Evolution, we are able to set up sales representatives and link those sales reps to transactions. These sales reps can be linked to a document itself or every line line item processed within Sage Evolution. So under your default, you need to specify, do you wish to post a rep document or rep line item? Um, also another important issue or factor to consider is that when creating a stock item, is that items can be marked commissionable or non-commissionable. So if I were, for example, to create a new stock item, you'll see that one of the options that is available is commissionable item. It's not commissionable by default. However, should the item uh, not be commissionable, simply deselect the option. Okay, and remember is that only commissionable items will be available to display on rep commissions report and be commissionable on those transactions. Now, very importantly is that we can set up different scenarios for your rep commissions. And we'll be looking at how the calculation is done to determine what a rep commission will be based on their sales transactions. So first of all, we're going to go set up our sales representatives. And this is done under your accounts receivable maintenance sales reps. And I'm going to add a rep representative there. And we can specify that the commission method paid to reps can either be based on the turnover or the profit from a certain transaction. We also have the ability to set up a sliding scale of target amounts and link those target amounts to various percentage commissions. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to set up a target amount with a commission. And I'm going to say the first level is 2000. And that's going to be a 5% commission. <coughs> Next level will be 5,000 linked to a 7% commission, and then it's going to be 18,000 linked to 11% commission. Okay. So this simply means is that uh, transactions processed between 2,000 and 5,000 will be liable for a 5% commission for the rep. Transactions between 18999 or between 5000 and 18999 will be, generate a 7% commission. And any transactions processed over 18999 will be available for an 11% commission. Right. So we can set those up and we can then go back to our customers and we're going to go and link the rep to a customer. So if I go to my customer, I've got a rep option there. Select my representative. Okay. And then go to contact details. I've got my delivery addresses there. And what you'll notice is that I can also link a sales representative to delivery address. So for example, if I'm delivering to a certain location, I can link that sales rep delivery address. However, I could have a different rep linked to the customer itself. So we've got a customer set up and we're using or we've linked that particular representative to the, to the customer. Now, if we go and process transactions, And we'll do an invoice. Remember, we set up that the rep commission method is going to be on turnover. So I'm going to now create, as you can see, specified a customer. The rep automatically appears on the document. And let's just go find an item. And I'm now going to insert an option there. Let's just say one. Okay, process that transaction. And 
and then I'm going to process a second transaction. Obviously, if need be, I could change the rep on the actual document itself. However, we do have permissions or for agents, which will disallow, which will prevent them from actually going to go and create or change the representative on the actual document. So let's continue and we're going to process this transaction. And let's just go check what has happened now with regards to our rep commission report. So we're going to go to reports. We've got a rep commissions report here. And what you'll notice is that there's a whole range of filters that can be used on this report. So for example, commission on rep or method on rep, turnover, profit. We've got a date range there various transaction types, and very importantly, we've got a couple of useful features here. So for example, saying a detailed without transactions, detailed with transactions, a summary report, and very useful report commission on paid invoices only. So you as an organization may only want to allocate or pay commissions to your representatives once you receive payment on those transactions from your customers. So I'm just going to say with our transactions, we've then got our customer filters, our stock item filters, et cetera. And I'm just going to go find a sales rep. That's our sales rep there. And for today's date, we're then going to go see what the transactions were as well as what the rep commissions payable to the rep is. Right, so there we have it. We've got these two transactions there. Those are our values. And currently now the rep commission for this rep is going to be 89.90. Now let's just check exactly how that transaction was processed or how the calculation came about for the reps commission. Right, let's just go check the following. We've said that it's 89.90. And let's just go check at the structure that's been set up for the representative. So there's our first level. And let's just do the following. Remember is that our two transactions were 1899. So that's how much the total of the turnover was for those two documents. Remember we've said that the target amount is from 2000 applicable 5%. So therefore we're saying any values which are below 2000 are not liable for commission. So therefore we simply need to subtract the 2000 from our total value. So it's that amount minus 2000. It's going to give you 1798. And if you then take 1798 and you multiply that by 5%, you've got your 89 Rand 90. So as you can see, very importantly to determine that the first level, if all, if all, for example, transactions were commissionable or paid commission, you'd certainly set the target amount to zero and then note that all transactions by that rep would be liable to be paid commission. In this particular instance, we've taken our total value, subtracted the First, first level amount, in this case 2000, and then based on that obtained a percentage value, which is amount payable to rep. So currently now, if we revert back to our report, there we've got our value. Right, so it's quite a simple calculation if you look at it from this point of view, simply because it's based on one level. 
Now, it's possible that obviously you could have different levels that, that come into play in processing or calculating the rib condition. And let's just run an option there. We've got different levels based on the rib condition values. So I'm going to say, And we're going to use the same formula in this instance, 5%. And right, let's take that, same values as the other rep. And we now need to go and go to our customers link the representative to the customer. Right, let's just go process a transaction now, a couple of transactions. And let's just say, got our rep transaction, our rep there. Right, process the transactions for our rep. And let's just go check at the rep commissioner's report now. Right, reports. Rep commissioners. And we're now going to run this report for the different rep, same information. And let's just go preview that. Right, so as you can see, we've now got that value and the amount payable commission is 859.80. Let's just check exactly how the transactions come about. So, got those details. And let's just go back to our sliding scale. Right, so once again, we know that our transactions are made up of three, or three, three seven, eight, five, and we sold four of those. So the turnover on those transactions for the rep was one, five, one, four, zero. And Based on our setup there, we're saying is that only transactions above 2,000 are applicable for your rep commission. So now I need to subtract 2,000 from there, which then gives us commission payable on 131440. So now we're saying is that the differences between those two levels is 3,000, 5,000 less 2,000, 3,000. So therefore, we're going to take 3,000 multiplied by the 5% level. It's going to give us 150. Okay, no problem there. The difference between those two levels determined by the percentage commission is 5%. Okay, and we've said that our value is 13140. We're subtracting that level which is the 3,000, 10140, and if you multiply that by 7%, 10140, multiplied by 7%, 
is then going to give you 70980. plus the 150, you there have our 85980, which is the commission payable to the rep based on the selection criteria. So the important thing to remember is that obviously on level one, that value is going to exclude commission, in this case the 2000, so we always need to subtract our commission or our turnover amount from this value to find what is the true reflection of the commission amount. Check what the difference is between the two levels, multiply that by your percentage, and then on the next level, obviously loop at the next percentage value. So if you go back to our report, There's our commission payable, and we know exactly how values that come out. Obviously, I can run the report detailed with those transactions. And the very important thing to understand is that, obviously, once again, let me just iterate is that you can run the report for rep commissions on pay invoices only, which means is that only once the invoice has been paid and allocated, will we be able to pay commission to the rep? Quite a useful feature if you want to ensure that you've got the cash flow available to pay your reps based on the sales that they have made. So once again, you can see exactly how the commissions are calculated. So very importantly that when setting up your rep commissions, that you do ensure that you've got the right information set up based on target amount and commission percentage and you can have it set up up to five levels. That's a wrap for me. Thank you so much for watching. Over and out. Goodbye.